Hey folks, how's it going? I've recorded this a couple of times and I'm going to try it again. I'm not sure I'm saying things exactly how I don't want to say them, but we're going to try it. <laughs> I've got a replay here of the P2 M82. Um, I've enjoyed all of your replays you guys keep sending me. They're fantastic. I've had a hard time getting my own content recorded. Just a shortage of good matches lately, unfortunately. And server pop seems to be a little lower. I guess most people have finished the marathon, so... It's been nice to have uh, some of your videos to fall back on. So PE2 in classic fashion, dive bombing here. And we have a very interesting matchup if you didn't see it at the beginning. It's uh, two bombers on each side and one heavy fighter on each side. So this is a good place to observe the meta in action in terms of the interplay between heavies and bombers and how that is going to play out across the course of this map, um, which is of course mid-tier and you're looking at Obviously, four zones there, right? This sort of asymmetrical uh, map that goes on. So, Hunter is going to, um, you know, test the waters in this thing. Uh, he's not a bomber pilot main, obviously. Neither one of us are. Um, but it's uh, this one is a fun one, and I would say of the bomber lines, this is probably, I'm at tier six on all of them right now. And this is the one I enjoy playing the most of the three, uh, just because of its kind of different style. So we're taking the command center, obviously that's where we're going to start with, and now we're headed into here. And uh, our heavy fighter has just gone down, so I'm going to be paying close attention to the kill feed in this match, and I'm probably going to pause a lot so we can kind of keep a tally running. Not so much of the heavy fighters dying, but what the heavy fighters are doing. So uh, it's interesting, by the way, that the um, bomb bay door is open, but the bombs are mounted externally. Anyway, just a little in secrecy that I have noted before <laughs> on this one. So we're going to make passes on uh, the center here, get these two out, and almost just a hair. One of probably the most frustrating things about bombers that I've heard uh, from bomber pilots uh, that they struggle with is this, you know, sort of the RNG that sometimes hits you with these things. But he's also not running gold ammo, and not a very highly skilled pilot either. Um, so you just kind of have the basics here, and then uh, I should have mentioned the turret and the boost kit there. Not specialized at all. Um, so the uh, heavy fighter, the enemy heavy fighter, has taken down one of the other bomber, the B-17. Okay. So I want to note in this match that uh, Vishivanka, uh, I think I might be saying that wrong, but I'm going to try it. Vishivanka does a really good job of interdicting the bombers, uh, both Hunter and uh, Diego. And we're going to keep track of that. Uh, in fact, Vishyanka just goes down there, right? He's sold out to get the B-17, which is generally what you would want to do in, in this uh, configuration, right? Because you've got two bombers on the enemy team and you're a heavy fighter. You don't have to worry quite as much about light fighters hunting you. You just want to get out there and keep the bombers from capping sectors and hope your bombers can do what they're supposed to do, right? And it looks like uh, the enemy bombers, well, there's one of them there, right? So uh, that's Buster up there. I'm not sure where the other one is. Uh, Captain Sandoval is floating around somewhere, probably out over the water, I would guess. Yeah, unfortunately, the replay is a little forked, so I'm a hard time seeing, seeing where all that stuff is at. Uh, let's do... Which one is it? Let's forget which one it is to make it bigger. Uh, there we go. So uh, let's just see as much of the map as we can. So we're going to head to the third zone here, try and uh, flip this one that's over by their base. And uh, we've got some help doing it, but it's two to two right now. And Vishyanka has just knocked down Diego again. So if you're keeping track, I mean, just from the how quickly that went, right? Basically, Vishyanka, Vishivanka um, came back in and immediately started hunting again. And he's dropped the B-17 twice. He may not see or be paying attention to Hunter since he's so low, right? And what Hunter is basically doing is one bomb each on the smaller targets and then trying to find a second bigger target for a fourth bomb or just hitting four small zones uh, and then trying to get rid of the rest. So Vishivanka has now come back over here and just moments after killing the B-17 is now going to take Hunter down. And there's not much you can do. It's kind of the, the name of the game, right? And the paper, rock, scissors of World Warplanes, heavy fighters are supposed to counter bombers. That's their job. And so Vishivanka is doing a great job of that. Um, 
I was keeping track at home, that's already three bomber kills, right? And uh, Rezo if we're all, Rezoir if we're all, um, is up there uh, doing some stuff as well. Um, and uh, fortunately, a bot has captured, has knocked down the B-32 on their side. But Buster is still flying somewhere. Buster was exceedingly high, and you'll see this with some bomber pilots. He's right there. He might have gotten knocked out earlier, though, given where he's at, because he's not that high now. Anyway, interestingly, he has less capture points than uh, anybody else does at this point. Looks like he's headed to the airfield in a steep dive. <laughs> so this is one of the things I wanted to show you. Um, this is part of where the meta gets out of whack, right? Because because of the way the game is playing out, there is no one to counter the heavy fighters. And so bombers get frustrated, right? And so um, you have things like this where a player just lawn darts. I mean, just literally throws himself into the ground. Um, and apparently, you know, either doesn't understand the game mechanics or is intentionally sabotaging the match, right? Because of how frustrating it is. And at the same time on this team, you have Hunter who's already captured two zones at this point um, and his partner in crime in the um, B-17 who's been shot down twice, he's probably just as frustrated as him, but looks like he's put in some work as well, right? This, it's like a zero sum game. It's, it's like a game where there are definitive outcomes that there's no gray area, right? Um, e either you're gonna get your job done or you're just going to get molested the entire match, right? Those are the two things that happen when you play a bomber. And it really kind of depends on if the other person knows heavy fighters or not, right? Do they know what they're supposed to be doing, how they're supposed to be doing it, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, we haven't been able to capture this zone. we got to wait for a reload. And uh, that's going to be difficult as well. Um, because in a moment, we're going to have a heavy fighter again coming in. So we're going to use the 23 millimeter, but unfortunately, the DPS output on it is, is not great, even though it does have that forward firing gun, right? And turrets, of course, can't shoot at ground targets. So you can see Vishivanka coming in there. He's going to try and salvage this zone, uh, take down the bomber, and then you know, push on to the next space. And so he's got a good diving run. He's lined up right on the tail of Hunter. You can tell this is heavy pilot who knows what he's doing. He's just absolutely hunting down the heavies. That's, uh, what, three or four kills on heavies now for him. Um, and then he's going to have to uh, contend with Reservoir for All uh, up there. Uh, so here's Diego. He's coming into the zone as well. He needs to drop some bombs, right, and try and get things done. But Vivanka is right on top of him. And you're going to see that in the kill feed in just a second as well. So that's four bomber kills, something like that. Right? So he's doing everything he can. Uh, the enemy bombers, Sandoval's doing, putting up good numbers. Uh, Buster, we don't see Buster anywhere right here. Uh, unfortunately, on the map. Looks like he may be over that way. Somebody's over the over the zone up here. And somebody's over this way. So, interesting to see. So yeah, Vishvianka is still doing good work, right? And here comes B-17 again, who's launched from the airfield, right? So um, what I think is frustrating on the other end is Vishy is doing everything he can, right? He's doing everything that should be asked of him um, in terms of countering these bombers. And yet it's not making a difference, right? It's just not making a difference. Um, and he's going to go down again. It's, what, five, six bomber kills, right? And I'm watching the kill feed, like, the other two bombers are up. They may not, you know, one of them's not doing a great job. We've acknowledged that, right? But the other one is. Um, and it's not enough, right? Um, so, again, this kind of zero-sum game comes into play where, you know, even if you're in a heavy and you're hunting bombers the entire match, you can oftentimes feel like you're not having an impact, that, that the bombers are so overwhelming um, that even in a heavy fighter, it doesn't matter. Even if you do everything you're supposed to, it doesn't matter, right? And that's a problem with the game in general. It's not just bombers and heavy fighters. This is a game, this is a, a problem with the game in general, that 
um, because the population is is lower and even if it were higher i think this would be true because it was true in 1.x and I, I believe it's true on the eu server as well and that is that if you have even one person who doesn't know what they're doing even one person who's not carrying their weight it becomes much much harder to win right you're just it doesn't take much to be outnumbered, let's put it that way. <laughs> it doesn't take much at all to be outnumbered. It takes uh, having one more competent pilot than the enemy team is often all you would need. Uh, Vishivanka, by the way, in the background has again killed Diego. Um, so there's there's another one. And we finally flipped the airfield, right? But it doesn't matter because this is a, um, you know, short match 600 points right and uh and it just it went it just went like that right and, and so hunter's got four um four sectors diego i think got one maybe um in the post battle results i think diego ended up or buster ended up capturing one and sandoval um did four as well two or three or four so you know you had two, two bomber pilots that didn't do as much, and you had two bomber pilots who were racking stuff up, and then you had two heavies who were countering them. And if you watch that feed at all, you'll see Reservoir for All's uh, uh, kind of stuff coming up in, as well, that he's also trying to put these planes down, although it's a little harder for him. The Q-102 is uh, not necessarily as good at dealing with bombers as the 410 is with that heavy firepower. But this is... This is what um, I wish people saw clearly. This is what I wish Wargaming saw more clearly. Um, and that is two things. One, the zero-sum game between heavy fighters and bombers. Uh, that, you know, it's a headache for one of them. Uh, it, it's a real pain in the butt for one, at least one of them. Maybe both of them. Because uh, that kind of conversation between the two, I guess you could say... Um, Either the heavy fighter is doing his job and the bombers are just dying left and right, <laughs> or the heavy fighter is not doing his job and the bombers are just absolutely sweeping across targets and flipping them ever so quickly. Um, and then occasionally um, you have this, which is sometimes you know what I would say is the third alternative, um, which is it's frustrating for both. You know, you end up with a lot of deaths. Right, um, you get hunted across the map by a heavy pilot who knows what he's doing, and so it's frustrating for a bomber pilot. But it's also frustrating for the heavy because um, there was nothing more he could do. He did everything he could, right? A skilled pilot in a plane prepped for this, killing bombers as quickly as humanly possible, and it's not enough to win the game. It's not enough to counter what the enemy bombers are doing. And that is where the ultimate rough edge of the game lies. And that is ultimately why bombers need to be changed, nerfed, fixed in some capacity in World War Planes 2 point whatever we're on now. Um, and it's because of this. It's because there are matches in the game, and mostly at Tier 10, but even down here at Tier 6, 7, right? There are matches where bombers are unbeatable. You just, you can't do anything. Um, and that can be incredibly frustrating. And the hard part, the hard thing for, for wargaming is how do you, how do you change or nerf bombers in such a way that they don't take over matches, right? They're, they're not that powerful, but they're also still fun to play because you can see even here, you know, Buster obviously wasn't having a good time. <laughs> I'm not sure Diego was either, right? Um, because that interplay between the heavy and the, and the bomber is, is just an all or nothing exchange for, for one of the two of them, right? Um, two light fighters meet, you know, you get some back and forth. A heavy fighter and a fighter meet, you probably get some back and forth. Or the medium uh, multi roll can go do something else, right? And the light fighter can do what he's doing. Like every class has some options in what you can do. Um, but once bombers enter the scene, there's only one style of play that's acceptable. And sometimes even that doesn't work if you're in a heavy fighter, right? Even, even then, sometimes you just you can't do any, you can't overcome what's in front of you. Now, like I said, I admit to a lesser extent this is an issue in World War Planes 2.0 anyway with pilots who maybe don't know how to play the game. I've said it a billion times. I said it again in Discord this week. It's because of the zone system. It's because of Conquest. That, that players have this issue. Um, you know, Buster is nosediving into the middle of an airfield and, and trying to throw the match. 
because of the way this game is set up, in part because of his frustration as a bomber pilot, and in part because of the sector system is, is a, a difficult thing for people to learn, to understand, and to play well with. Um, and so just, you know, this is a, an incredible video because on the one hand, you know, Hunter does a fine job flipping zones, and he really does, you know, in some sense, you know, get them the victory. But at the same time, there's so much going on wrong, going wrong in the background, right? So much that's happening. And um, you know, I'm probably not pointing out anything that 99% of you don't know or agree with, but I love this match showcased it so well. It showcased so well all of the different rough edges and broken spots in World of Warplanes uh, and, uh, and in Conquest mode. And with a balance between bombers and heavy fighters and, and the rest of the planes on the map. So um, for some things to, for all of us to be aware of, right? Um, and just to take a moment to say, what could we have done differently, right? Um, in this case, you know, if you are in Hunter's shoes, you did what, exactly what you needed to do. I'm just going to go down the list here. In Razor's shoes, you pretty much did what you needed to do, right? Diego's shoes... Um, you know, I'm not sure how you deal with a 410 and an unspecced B17G, which may be stock for all we know. I don't, I don't remember looking at it closely enough to tell. Um, but in a four zone map, there's only so many zones you can be attacking and, and the 410 can cover those pretty quickly, right? So you may have to get creative, but again, there's, there's not much else that he could have done other than what he did, right? Vishivanka, what does he do other than what he did? I, I don't know. I mean, I guess he could have attacked the airfield or gone. I probably would have gone to the command center. Might would have been the other only other alternative. But there's a very good chance that Diego and Hunter get supremacy on the two zones they're working on before Vishivanka can get over to the command center and flip it, especially since the command center doesn't have enough fighters, uh, air defense aircraft. Uh, to be able to guarantee a flip, which is one of the issues, right? That there's always enough ground targets to guarantee a flip. There's not always enough air targets to guarantee a flip, and that can be problematic. Um, Sandoval did everything right, as far as we're concerned. He did what he needed to do. And, and Buster really is the weak link here because he threw the match, right? If, it, if he had actually played the game, even if he had not captured anything, if he had just not nosedived into the airfield in the middle of the match, this might would have had a, a you know a closer outcome at least right or been a little more of a fight um but um but even then you know you, you see why he's doing it because what he what else is he going to do right um he's he's frustrated and um i hate that i don't like what he did but i get it i, I get the frustration of playing heavies and playing bombers which is why i don't play bombers for the most part and i rarely play heavies um, i just don't want to get involved in this particular uh, exchange uh, where you're forced into playing a particular way you're forced into playing 110 percent playing your heart out in the match you know it can't be any form of casual at all you just got to go all out to be able to even have a shot at winning it um, and and knowing that even if i do that it may not be enough uh, that's that's real frustrating uh, style of game that's a real frustrating game mechanic that's a real frustrating meta to have in place and Ultimately, my hope and wish for World of Warplanes is that some of this would get fixed. Um, and I don't know how. It's got to be incremental changes probably. Um, but sooner or later, they're going to have to look at this. And you know, we had a brief discussion in Discord this week. Um, this is very much like artillery in World of Tanks, if you play that game. You know, for a long time, Wargaming ignored, ignored, ignored the issues with artillery. And eventually, they had to do a major systems overhaul. They had to change the way it worked um, in order to just, just balance it out and make the game enjoyable and, and fun again. And sooner or later, Wargaming is going to have to do that with bombers. They're going to have to do that to a lesser extent with heavy fighters. Um, or it's uh, matches like this are going to become more the norm uh, than, the, than the exception. So thanks for listening to me fumble and ramble uh, tonight in this recording. As I said, I'm not sure I said it very well. Um, so I'll be happy to discuss further in the comments. I appreciate you being along for the ride. I do have some gameplay from me this week to put up. It's not great. There's been a lot of one-on-one -on -one and two-on-two -two matches that have ended in superiority, but by golly, we're going to put something up for people to enjoy. So look for that. Look for some additional replays as well. Again, I thank you all for sending those to me. I promise I'll try to get to you, uh, but I do have a huge stack of them to wade through, and i got to make some decisions about what to go up. So if you see me in the game, feel free to wave and jump in and say hi and uh, take a moment to chat with me or flight up with me for a battle if you would like to. I'm happy to do that with you. And I hope and wish the best of luck for you if you're pursuing the G4 uh, or are just uh, working on grinding those planes and uh, enjoying the game. Uh, may you have more matches that are not like this one. 
Till then, good luck and good hunting.